Alright, you read the title. We're gonna make a game in Python. So Python, it is known for being the most used, easy, and fun programming languages out of its glory. However, it is also known for being the slowest programming languages, comparing to the other ones that is fast and efficient like C or C++. Dog, shut the fuck up! Now that doesn't mean it's bad or it's not a good coding language to use in terms of project making. If you know its language so well and grown the development of it, you can create anything. There's a handful of video games that is made in Python. Hell, even a dedicated game developer that has done many games by only using Python. AKA Fluffy the Potato. Now as for me, I've done and made a video of me learning C++. So it makes sense for me to jump on to a next programming language that I've never done before. So Python is my next stop. For this, we need some sort of framework or library of code to make our projects. And that's where I stopped by and found Pygame. It is known for being a popular framework to create Python games because we have all the functions and necessary codes we need to make our game, you know? After all of this in place, let's jump right into it. Uh, hey guys. This is my first day of learning Python and um, this is the documents right here. You see that? Yeah. There's a lot of things to need to be learned. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be worth it, honestly. But let's let's just drain. Let's just jump it. Uh, let's just get into it. Looking through the documents is gonna be very useful because you know it has all the information and stuff. Bruh. Of course, not only the documents is useful, but also tutorials on YouTube. Ah yes, scrolling through tutorials never fails me. Anyways, after all of that and con and made my first project. I don't have a footage for it, so it's kind of unfortunate, but here's a screenshot of it, yeah. Uh, that's a red circle. Now here's the footage of the same project, but heavily modified. As you can see here in this footage, I've done quite a lot of things in here actually, like loading the sprites, printing a basic movement, spawning enemies, loading up a text, yeah, basic stuff. And just to point it out, when I say spawning enemies, I literally meant by then one enemy just reset its position when it touches on the ground. Now that is just a warm-up phase. No, 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 no. That's not the end right there, buddy. Let's get to the real bits and make an actual game. So today's project, we're gonna make a space shoot em up game or something like that. I don't know. A rocket ship that shoots asteroids with scrolling backgrounds, okay? For starters, we need to create the player or the rocket ship in this case with a basic movement. I simply make the player class that has all the function and action we need to create a player. Then we just initialize it. Then we, we just initialize it on. How do you say these words? Then we just initialize it on the main game loop and boom! We got a let ship going around here. Yeah, look at him go. What the fuck? So, how about the background? Well, we're gonna make an illusion that the player looks like it's moving on space by just scrolling the background itself. If, if you can tell. To do this, we just reset the background's position the moment it goes off screen, and then just have the second background scroll along with it. See? It looks like a uh, space. Moving. We're, we're moving on space, yeah. Uh, for this one, it's a little complex than your average uh, coding of the players moving all of this stuff. Honestly, I should have learned this earlier. God dang it. But that will be boring. I'm not gonna do that off camera. Let's do this on live. No, not this type of life, what the fuck? Anyway, there's a lot of things we need to do before heading to shooting. First, we need to get the collision out of the way, because this is going to be useful in the long run. In Pygame, we need to use something called Rekt, which can act as a collision boundary that can detect for other collision boxes, like the asteroids or the bullet detecting the collision to the asteroid. This is what the code looks like for this to work. It, it doesn't do anything yet on this coding right here, but it's going to be useful later, so bear with me. Let's get to the shooting. First, we're creating the class of the bullet, where we need the X and Y position, for, and for the sprite, yeah... For this testing purposes, I'm just gonna use this Obongo sprite. <laughs> if we press the K key, yes, we're using the K key on this one because we're using the WASD movement. We call the bullet variable and initialize it to the rocket ship's gun, barrel, machine gun? Where was it? Uh, I didn't even think of it when I drew the rocket ship, but uh, I don't freaking know. Let's take a look at the code so far. Oh, what? Why is it shooting infinitely? Shit. Okay, there we go. Now it's working perfectly. Yeah. You know what? After all of that stuff that I explained in this video, I didn't even mention the bullet moving. What is wrong with me? Now we get the movement and shooting? It's an unquestionable shooting, to be honest. What's the point of the shooting mechanic if we ha don't have something to shoot with? You know? What are, we sh what are we shooting? Just the empty void of space? What is this? Because that's gonna be the next part. The enemies. Or the 
asteroid. I don't know how you can call this an enemy. To make this quote unquote enemy, it's pretty much have the same function as a bullet but with few different tweaks. It moves to the opposite direction so it can go towards and kills us. Then we make it spawn to the right edge of the screen. And finally, we make it spawn in a run wide position and it also spawns with a cooldown. Because the last thing you'll see is a pile of asteroids coming at you all at once. So let's do the asteroids functions first. We just create a class for it when it's an necessary variables and functions. Nice. Then on the main game loop, we create a spawn timer where it spawns us the timer reach to zero, then set back to its maximum cooldown. While it spawns, we make the wide position random so it doesn't spawn on the same spot everywhere. <laughs> I did, didn't totally didn't stutter there. What is wrong with yeah. And there we go. Asteroids done. If the spawning system works, yeah! Now the game itself is coming along nicely. Look at that, we have a game going on here. You can really destroy the asteroids with the bullet, right? It's... That kind of makes the asteroids overpowered, but let's fix that. For this, whenever the bullet's collision collide to the asteroid, uh, the asteroid will destroy itself, and also the bullet as well, because we don't want the bullet making it overpowered. And BAM! We're done! So we technically have a game. But the one last thing to add, scoring systems. This is a simple task. First, we need to have a text to indicate how many points do we have by just loading up a font, rendering a string, which is in this case the points variable, then draw it to the screen within its position, then there we go, we have text in the game. Now, for this to work, we just simply add a code where it just adds 5 points whenever it destroys the asteroid. And the last thing that I add is whenever you die, uh, it has game over screen and it has player's lives. So, and there we have it, our little game of ours made in Python or pie game if we're going technical. But anyways, that's gonna be it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.